What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com, continuing our series on architectural and structural modeling for SketchUp. So in today's video, we're going to take the structure of our barn model and take it into layout to create a couple different structural plans. I do want to note that as we get into this, I go into the layout process a lot more in depth in my SketchUp Essentials for Architecture course, where we focus specifically on layout. I did set that course up specifically to teach you an easy to follow process to create plans in layout. So if that's something you're interested in, I will link to that in the notes down below and let's go ahead and just jump into it. So what I've done from the last video to this one is I've gone through and I've finished modeling out my barn. And so basically what I did is I added skin and a roof on here, as well as different things like the trim that goes around the openings and some other stuff like that. So notice that I've modeled out like the girts and the purlins that go on the roof, um, just so we have something that we can take into our structural model. And notice that what I've done is I've grouped all of these different things in their own group. So within my barn, if I double click inside of these, you can see how my girts are all in their own group, my purlins are all in their own group, my trusses are all in their own group. And then those are all on layers. So each one of those groups is on a layer so I can turn them on and off and the whole idea behind this is we wanted to be as modular as possible meaning we wanted to be able to turn different things on and off um, when we take these into layout and so what I wanted to do is I wanted to um, talk a little bit about setting up our views and then show you how to take some of this into layout. So right now, this is what my barn looks like with everything on. So my site is on, my trim is on, all of that different stuff is on. Well, what we want to do is we want to create views inside of SketchUp that we can then take into layout to use for our plans. So we set up all of those different views inside of SketchUp um, before we take them into layout because if you try to like move your camera around and stuff like that inside the layout, you start running into problems. And so what I want to do first is I want to start off by creating a couple different views inside of my model. So right now we have our working view which is the view that we're going to use when we want to actually edit our model. It kind of has everything on inside of our barn. It has everything that doesn't have to do with our barn turned off. And then we have our overall working view, which has my barn turned on and my site turned on. What we want to do is we want to create a few more views um, specifically associated with the barn that we can take into layout. And so the first thing we want to do is we want to, since this is going to be a structural drawing, we want to turn off our skin and our roof. So I'm going to take those layers and I'm going to turn them off. And so now that those are turned off, we can see our structure. I'm probably going to turn my trim around my openings off as well. And so we have an overall like isometric view of our structure now. So probably I'm going to take this, I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to click add and I'm going to create a, saint, a scene and I'm going to call it barn underscore ISO. So that's going to be my isometric view. So that has now saved this as my isometric view. And probably I'm going to actually rename this barn struck ISO. So now I know this is a structural view. So now we have our working view and we have a structural isometric view. Well, now what we want to do is we want to create a floor plan. And so what the floor plan is going to do is the floor plan is going to show us where our columns go and where our building pad is. So in order to do this, we're going to do a straight up and down view of our barn. And you can see how right now what this shows us is this shows us all of our trusses and everything else, which is great for a certain kind of view. But for this particular situation, we don't want to show all of the trusses and things like that. And so what we want to do is we want to take a section cut across our building. And so I want to take a section cut below um, things like the header over my main overhead door so that I'm just seeing things like my columns. So the way that we're going to do that is in your large tool set, there's an option for section plane. So you can click on here, move your mouse out, and then you can click inside of your model. So what that did is that added a section plane inside of my model. And so what we want this to do is we want to move this up until we get a cut that's basically cutting through our columns, but isn't cutting through something like this. Uh, we don't want it to be cutting through our header beam. So we're just going to click on this and we're going to move this down until it's showing a cut through our columns just like this. So the section cut view is now in here taking a cut across my barn. And in the future, we may move this um, inside of our barn model um, just in case we need to take a section cut of multiple different things. I don't think we need to worry about that right now. Um, so we'll just kind of leave this as is. And so what I want to do is I want to set up a view where we're looking top down 
at our barn. So usually I just go into my view, views toolbar and click on top and that'll give me a straight up and down view of my barn. So now what I want to do is I want to turn perspective off because you can see how right now this is showing these going to a vanishing point and it's not giving us a true plan view with no perspective of our of our barn. So we want to go up to camera we want to click on parallel projection. So what parallel projection does is that turns that perspective mode off so this is a true straight up and down view of this barn. And so you can see how now what we have is we have a view that basically shows us where our columns are and then it's also showing us our um, our girts on the outside of the building. And you can turn those on and off depending on what you're trying to do. I'm going to leave them on for right now and I'm just going to create a view where this is kind of centered inside of my view in SketchUp. So something like this and then the other thing I'm going to do is I've taken all of my dimensions and I've put them in a group on a layer so I can turn them off because I don't necessarily want those dimensions to show up inside of my layout. We're going to do our dimensioning inside of layout. And so the other thing I want to do is I want to change the style of this view because right now this has a gray background and uh, it's just not 100% what I'm looking for. I want this to be more of a traditional black and white plan. So to do that, we just go into our styles and in this situation, I usually select something like the hidden line style. So what the hidden line style does is it basically gives us a white background and then a basically a hidden line line style. There's a couple things we need to change when I look at this. So for example, right now this section cut is going through these columns. Well, what it's doing is it's making these columns, it's filling them in because we're taking a section plane across those. So in this situation, I want to turn that off. So we're going to go edit our styles. And we're going to edit this hidden line style so the section fills are turned off, just like this. And notice how this gives us a section line width. So basically what section line width does is it allows us to adjust the thickness of anything that's being intersected by our section plane. So in this situation, I don't want these to be any darker than the girts that I have on here. So I'm just going to bring these down to one. So now I have everything in here just as a one. And we can adjust our line weights a little bit more um, in the future. But for right now, I think this is kind of showing what we want to show. So we have our barn here and I want to, first of all, make sure that I've updated the style with my changes by clicking on this button right here. And then I want to right click and I want to add a view and we're going to call this barn structural floor plan. So S-T-R-U-C-F-P and you can name these however you want. But now what we have is we have a view where we can work on our barn we have a structural isometric view, and then we have a structural floor plan view. So what that floor plan view does is that shows us our floor plan with the section plane active. And so now I want to create a couple different elevations. So we have our barn structural floor plan, which we're going to take into layout. I also want to create some elevations. And so I'm going to bounce back to this structural isometric view right here. And I want to go ahead and I want to select one of these left or right or front or back options. So you can see how I can select any of these in order to get a front view or a side view or whatever I want in this situation. So what I want to do right here is we want to do the same thing we did before. We want to turn off perspective by going to parallel projection. We want to select that hidden line style and usually I go to in model in this case and I select this hidden line style usually it has the same that'll show me what's actually inside of my model as opposed to me having to pick from a list and I can just pick the style that we've been using and so we're gonna zoom in until our barn shows up on our view we're gonna turn off our dimensions and then we're gonna right click and we're gonna update this view and then we'll right click and we'll rename it structural elevation view. And so we could go through and we could do this for all of the different views. But remember, all we're really doing is we're, just, we're basically setting these up so we can bring them into layout and quickly create our plans from these views. So for right now, I'm going to go ahead and leave this as is. I think we'll just put all of this on one sheet and I'm going to save my model. So make sure that you've updated these so that all of the changes you've made have been saved inside of your, uh, inside of your scenes. Then we're going to do a file save and then you can either click the button for file send to layout or you can open up layout manually. I'm just going to do a file 
send to layout. And so when you open this up, this is going to give you a number of different different template options. And if you've created any of your own, which I have, then they'll show up right here as a, as a little tab noted My Templates. And so for me, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select the TSE Architectural D template. Um, if you don't have a template, you can just select like an Architectural D type template in order to follow along. So I'm going to open this up. And I get way more in depth on how to create templates and other things like that in the layout course. So you can set this up so that you have your own title block right here um, and other information in here as well. But what this has done is this basically brought a viewport into layout showing the view that we had selected when we clicked on the button for send to layout. And so what we can do from here is we can take this and we can actually adjust the scale and other things about this inside of layout. And the other thing we can do is we can also right click in here and we can adjust the scenes that we have selected. So for right now, let's go ahead and select our structural floor plan. So that's going to be our view that we want to show on this sheet. So now that we have this on here, first thing I like to do is I like to keep everything organized because um, otherwise if you start getting things on different layers like annotations and other things like that, it starts getting really messy. If you ever have to move things around, if you start stacking things on different layers in order to use your raster and vector viewports and other things like that. So what I want to do in this situation is I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to move this to a layer labeled floor plan line work. And so if you don't have that, you can create that. But basically what I've done is I've set this on a layer where now I can turn, turn it on and off and I can also lock it. So now that this is on this layer, floor plan line work, and again, you can click right here to add this if you don't have one of those, you can now click on the lock button. And once you click on the lock button, what that means is that means that things are no longer going to move around. You can't accidentally move them. So um, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to unlock this for a second, and I'm going to make sure that it's aligned or centered on my sheet, at least as much as possible. And then I'm going to lock that layer. And so then what we can do is we can start adding dimensions. And so the other thing I want to do is I want to select this and I want to go into my SketchUp Model tab, and I want to set a scale. So in this situation, for example, I'm going to set my scale to probably 3 eighths of an inch equals one foot so that this fits nicely on my sheet. So now I've set this to a scale, I can go ahead and I can lock it. So now I can't move it around. And so now what I want to do is I want to add some dimensions. So the way we're going to do that is we're just going to come up here and we're going to click on the button for dimensions. And I usually like to make sure I put these on the dimensions layer so that I can flip them on and off and also so I can select them all and edit them. So I'm just going to click on dimensions. And if you don't have a layer for dimensions, you can come in here and you can add that. Again, just by clicking right here, I'm just going to add a dimension from this point to this point. I'm just going to move my mouse off right here. And I don't really like the style that's in here, right? This is currently in as decimal inches. I don't necessarily want that to be in here as decimal inches. I want this to be architectural inches. So I'm going to set this to architectural. I'm going to set my precision to, we'll go to a 16th for right now. So notice how I now have a dimension on my dimensions layer. And I can turn that on and off by turning the dimensions layer on and off. So let's add a couple more dimensions in here. And then I'm going to show you a quick, easy way to adjust those. So notice how, for example, all of these are coming in as decimal inches right now. And so I'll show you how to adjust all of those at once in just a second. And one thing to note about this is if you want to place all of these at the same distance, you can just single click here and then double click here. And what that'll do is that'll place your dimension with the same distance um, that the last one that you had in here came in at. So when I double click, you can see how this is moving this off of my barn at the same length as the ones before so that they're all aligned. So that's an easy way to add these in here um, at that same length. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a couple more dimensions here. So this one will be the dimension of my door. And so now what we've done is we've added our barn in here and we've added a bunch of dimensions. However, notice that all of these dimensions are really small. Well, one of the pluses of putting all of your dimensions on the same layer, and I already didn't do that, so I'm just going to select these real quick and I'm going to move them to 
the dimensions layer. So now they're all in that same layer. But now the plus on this is you can right click on this and you can select all of the entities on a layer. So because all of my dimensions are on this one layer, I can come in here and adjust them all at once. So now we're gonna go into our dimension styles. Actually, we're gonna go into our text style and we're gonna make all of these dimensions a little bit bigger. So notice how I can do this by adjusting my text and since these are all selected, they're all getting the same change in here. And so I also wanna set all of these to architectural inches, just like this. And notice how right now I'm having an issue with my dimensions. So the issue I'm having with my dimensions right now is for whatever reason, because they have auto scale selected, um, it tried to pull in the scale of the floor plan that I had. And for whatever reason, it got confused and it basically set these dimensions to my page scale instead. So when this says one foot six inches, you can see how what that means is that means that this is one foot six inches along this actual sheet rather than in the scaled view from my model. And so the way that you can work around that is you can just turn off auto scale and I'm just gonna set this scale to match what I had in my drawing. So in this case, I'm gonna set it to 3 eighths of an inch. You can see how now all of these are in here at the proper scale. So if you ever have these kind of jump to a different scale, you can adjust these by using the dimension style and manually setting the scale in here. And so this video is getting a little bit long. So I think I'm just going to, for right now, add a title to this sheet. We're gonna call it good. So we're gonna go down to the scrapbooks section or the scrapbooks window right here. We're gonna click the drop down. You're gonna look for title block plane. So what title block plane is going to do is that's gonna have a number of different title block options that you can drag into your model. So in this situation, I have a layer for all of my annotations that I wanna make sure that I put everything on. And I'm gonna take my drawing name and drag it in. And so for this one, we're just gonna name this drawing structural floor plan. We'll go ahead and make sure that we've set this drawing scale. Or we'll enter the drawing scale right here and we'll just call this sheet S1. And we can label that over here as well. Notice how in my, uh, so notice how my title block is locked. That's because it's on a layer for every inside page and I locked it so I don't accidentally move it around. So I'm gonna go down to my on every inside page. I'm gonna undo this and we're going to just adjust this to S. 1.00. There's some other trickier things you can do with your title block. I don't want to talk too much about those for right now, but basically this is how we can create a simple floor plan inside of SketchUp and Layout. So remember that if you're looking for more in-depth layout, layout instruction, I talk about that in my SketchUp Essentials for Architecture course, which I will link to in the notes down below. Um, if you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it. And I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.